Now I need to create an interior elevation. We can do that by using the elevation tool. We can use that using the section tool, or we can use the interior elevation tool. They're all effectively going to do the same thing for us. The main advantage of the interior elevation tool is that we can do multiple views together. Uh, we can limit the height of all of them rather than making it infinitely tall, uh, but generally that's the option that we'd use the interior elevation tool for. In order just to make this simple, I'm going to use the section tool and we'll cut this the entire way through. I don't want to really cut through much, uh, much of the interior at least. I want to cut through the structure. And what we see when we generate that, this is a blue line, it's only got one marker, but it could have two markers, it really makes no difference. When we go into the settings, we can change the way the marker looks, we can change the way the model looks. That's what we're really concerned with, but let's open it up first and have a look. Open with current settings. What do we get? So it's a bit color, a bit colorful. We've got a hatch that represents the ground as the slab as concrete. This one's not necessarily true, and we don't really want that. We're going to limit our view to the edge. We have a bounding box around the edge of our 3D view, and that's really all that we want. So we could do that right now, and we could do that in this view. We can add two-dimensional to this view. We could get a, a pen, a very thick, a thicker pen. We could use 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.35, and we can draw a box around the outside which represents the extent of our view. And effectively, that's it. That's the extent of our interior view. Some things here are floating. Uh, let's move these down so they're sitting on the ground. I don't necessarily want it to look like this in color. How do we change these settings? Let's go into the settings, right click, settings, model display. Now I've got a few different options to think through. I've got the cut elements. What do I want to see? That's the sectional elements. So what am I cutting through? At the moment, I'm really only cutting through a couple of walls and a couple of slabs. I don't want those to be cut fill as in section. I want them to be very simple. So I could use uniform surface. What do I want that surface to be? Well, I sort of want it to be solid. Do we have an object that is solid? Maybe I could do paint ivory black. Maybe I could make that a uniform pen color. Maybe I could make that one. So that'll make that solid black. So that now is cleaner. It's more presentation, less documentation. So that's partly what I'm trying to achieve. What about the things in elevation? Do I want to see those? Do I want to see those in color? Not really. Maybe in a black and white version. So let's have a look at the settings available there. So the setting, section settings. Still in model, display, but now we'll just go down to the next box. We could minimize this one if we wanted to. What about the uncut element? So that's all the things that we're not cutting through. So that includes the windows in the background, the joinery, and the furniture. How do we want to view that? Do we want it, do we want to not see it? That would be nothing. Do we want a uniform pen color? Own surface colors non-shaded or own surface colors shaded. I'm going to choose the non-shaded version and show you what I mean by this. If we're trying to understand our model in terms of a color, then this is the best option to choose. This gives us a representation of the model color, and this is important. This is based on the surface color. So if I select the glass, go into the surface settings, we're seeing that this is the color that we're representing, our surface color, not our texture. So we don't need a texture to view something in elevation or section or floor plan. The only time a texture is used is when we're doing an open GL 3D view or when we're doing a photo render. If we're doing an artistic render, we're probably still not even using it. So if we're trying to represent color, that's probably the best view. And so we could, of course, save this as a saved view. So this will be our elevation. And we can save this as a save view in here. And we'll call this section or elevation one color.
Now, the way that we change these settings, these settings are derived from the section, the section marker. So I can't use my view settings to necessarily override section marker settings. If I wanted to create multiples, I'd need to create multiple section markers. So I can do that. It's not a very good way of working, but it will be fine for what we're trying to create. Into this one, let's just look at some different settings. So it duplicated so far. Now in the uncut elements, let's change that to own surface colors shaded and see the difference. This option basically adds shadows. So we see that it's very, very dark based on the way that this section's working. If I was to go to my lobby and cut my model, so it only had this half, and I was to view my section and have the sun shining in here, then we'd have more shadows happening, but that's not necessarily the case. Let's go into the settings and have a look at some more options. We can change this to uniform pen, uniform pen, and change it all to black lines. And realistically, this is the only other option that I want. I want to be, be able to have just black lines, and I don't even necessarily want the grey. Where's the grey coming from? It's coming from shadows. So now if we go into the settings, we also want to turn off sun shadows. So now it's just a black and white drawing. And so we're going to save both of these as options. We'll save this one now. Elevation 1. Outline. Again, I'm not really concerned about layer combinations. It's something that is very, very important, but not something that I'm trying to focus on at the moment. So that's all that we want. Now we're going to put these onto layouts, just like before. We'll create these now as new layouts. And we'll rename this as, sorry, let's leave that. ID, elevation, one, color. And we'll do the same thing again. Elevation one outline. And just like as I did with my 3D view, I'm going to save this as a saved view. Then I'm going to put it onto the layout. Drag one in. Drag this onto the layout. It's very, very small. Could I make it twice as big? Yes, I could. Let's go into the settings. View settings. Let's change it to 1 to 50. And while we're at it, let's go into the save view of, sorry, the section of this one. And we'll turn off the sun shadows from here as well. Now, sometimes we'll see that this box hides. Again, what's that based on? It's based on our frame. So if we go fit frame, then it will readjust and it will just move it out of our screen. So then we just need to move it back into place. And I'm going to shrink this box down. Now, when I shrink this box down, I'm going to be a little bit particular this time because I only want it to represent the outline. So I'm going to reduce it down to the edge. To my internal edge that is. And just to ensure that I get consistency, once I've drawn that edge, I could then do a black outline around that. So I could use my thick pen again. And if I wanted it to be much thicker and that's the thickest pen I've got, I could change my pen settings to have a thick pen. Uh, I could also use a fill. <clears throat> So let's use the line tool first. I'm going to use my offset in order to be able to draw a bigger box. Makes that 10. 
I will use this as black, magic wand to fill, and then magic wand to empty. So I end up just with a big black box around it. That's probably way too fat. Of course, once it's drawn, it's very easy to edit. I can offset all edges, and instead of saying 10, let's make that 8. So again, internal elevation. We don't want to focus on structure. We just want to understand the internal surfaces. <clears throat> so there we go. Now, I only want to have one per page because I'm not trying to create an, a layout in Archicad, really. What I'm trying to do is to create this view in Photoshop. I could, of course, add more people. I could add two-dimensional people into this view in Archicad, which I'll do this time. So if I go into my Object tool, let's go to Object Library, Visualizations, People, People Contours. So here we've got 2D people. Some of them are a little bit awkward in that their feet aren't at the same level. Uh, having one where people's feet are all at the same level helps. Then we just need to choose which orientation are we trying to show. Front elevation. We can use 3D people for this, but I find the 2D people are a little bit nicer, particularly when we're trying to do a two-dimensional drawing. And of course we can do this in Photoshop as well. We can have 2D people in Photoshop. I really shouldn't have a dog in this lobby, so let's find a person for these two. Just a bit, maybe. Great. Let's go back to it. So we can output this. Let's just create a copy of it first. So we're going to select this view and the fill at the same time. Copy paste onto our additional layout and then we're going to link this to our outline drawing so that we can interchange those. I don't want the people on the outline drawing, I just want that on the colour one. Again, I might not even keep the outline people. I much prefer 2D outline people than um, the Archicad 3D object people, so I'll probably use those. I probably won't worry about editing them or getting rid of those in Photoshop later. Now we just need to publish those. Show organizer. Just like before, we'll just add these to the list, select, and then I want to publish selected items, and that's it. We're, we're finished. We're finished for our elevations in Archicad. Then we're going to have a look at, in our next video in Photoshop, how to start to manipulate these textures and colors and lights to make it a little bit more believable and a representation of what we're trying to show.